Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook, and we are so happy to have a special guest with us today. So um, Nick from Local Spicery will be joining us in just a minute. So uh, thank you for finding us today. This is not our usual day, but you're going to find out that through the holidays, we'll probably be doing some extra um, lives just to um, make sure that we have the ability to get everybody on that wants to share information with you. So thanks for showing up today. You can ask questions in the chat feed if you would like. We just ask that you would preface the questions with three question marks and end with three question marks. That way um, they'll just pop out to Tom. Tom's here. He'll be over here um, by my side moderating. And we have Tiffany and Jesse in the chat feed as well. Thank you, ladies, for being here. So we are going to get started. And afterwards, I have a lot of announcements to make. There's so much going on in the plant-based community. And um, we just want you to be aware of lots of different opportunities. So Tom, let's bring Nick on. He's in the waiting room. I'm so excited for this, you guys. Tom's working on it. So we're going to be um, talking about cinnamon today. It's going to be awesome. One of my favorite spices. Here we go. Hi, Nick. Hey, Tammy, how are you? I'm very good. So good to see you. I'm so excited for today. So you guys, this is Nick from Local Spicery and Nick and Evelyn are the proprietors. He is the spicerer and um, he has the best cinnamon that you've ever tasted. It's just, they're amazing and you have varieties. And so um, if people missed it uh, a few weeks ago, we did a, um, a whole lesson all about curry, the origins, the different kinds. We got such amazing feedback from that people loved it they were like can you do more with different spices so here we are <laughs> ask and we'll deliver that's right and so i'm so excited because it's baking season and people are thinking about the holidays and you know making breads and cookies and desserts and stuff and cinnamon is a prominent um, spice used in that so i'm excited to learn some more today i've got a notepad here so i can take notes about <laughs> cinnamon um, cause I love to learn. I love to improve on my cooking and you're such a wizard in the kitchen when it comes to the spices. So I'm excited. Well, you're, you're entirely too kind, but, uh, similar cinnamons, you know, as, uh, you know, as our world gets smaller and smaller, people are suddenly presented with a series of options. You know, when I was growing up, cinnamon was one thing, but, uh, but they're actually, you know, a, uh, a multitude of distinct uh, species, and they all have different flavor and different health uh, properties. Yeah, so let's talk about that. How many different kinds of cinnamon are there? Uh, well, in total, quite a few, but in the culinary world, there's really four. And of the four, two of them are so close that we really, we use them interchangeably and, and they're, they're even named interchangeably. So I'm gonna be talking in terms of three and I'll tell you how that is. But um, the three that we carry, uh, we carry the, uh, the Salon cinnamon, which is sometimes uh, called true cinnamon, sometimes called Mexican cinnamon. Um, some people call it uh, uh, the healthy cinnamon. And we'll get into that, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, we carry uh, Indonesian cassia, and Indonesian cassia is what most people think of as cinnamon. At least 80% of the cinnamon that's sold in the United States right now is an Indonesian cassia. Um, and, uh, and then also the one that, uh, that, that outsells all the others for us and the people in the, the whole food plant-based community seem to be the most gaga over is the, uh, the Saigon cassia, also called Vietnamese cinnamon or Saigon cinnamon. Um, if you, let's, if you, we'll dive right into it because there's one hard distinction. And that is you probably heard me uh, use the word cinnamon for the salon and the word cassia for the other two. And there is a, there is a very visible difference when you look at the quills um, and how they're formed. And I'm gonna show you, so you all actually 
walk these up to the camera so you'll see the difference. But um, Ceylon cinnamon uh, comes from the island of Sri Lanka. Uh, it's also grown in uh, uh, in parts of India. They grow they grow some in uh, in Indonesia. You know there could be other areas, but those are the areas I've seen it come from. Uh, mostly it uh, it's grown in Sri Lanka, where it's it, which it is native to. Um, the uh, Sri Lanka, the uh, the Ceylon cinnamon, um, which is you know people call the true cinnamon. I'm going to bring this right up to the camera. If you look at if you look at the end of that, you'll see that okay, back up are, just a little just okay. a little bit so it'll focus. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that there are lots of uh, very very thin. Uh, pieces of bark. It almost looks like the end of a cigar. Whereas mm. a ca a cassia, if you can see that, okay. it's a much much it's a much much thicker bark, and uh, and and the distinction in flavor is huge. In that the salon cinnamon is by far the mildest in flavor and the mildest in terms of of the health benefits, and the side uh, you know the the cassias are the opposite. Uh, and it all comes down to, uh, uh, you know, the, the percentage of essential oils that you'll find in the, uh, in the product. And along with the essential oils go, uh, go the bio, the, uh, the biochemicals, they're, they're called cinnamaldehydes. And within the cinnamaldehydes is a, uh, is a, uh, a specific biochemical called coumarin. Um, and coumarin is both the good thing and the bad thing. Uh, uh, it, 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 it gives us most of the health benefits that uh, people look for from cinnamon. It's also the controversial side. So the, uh, the Ceylon cinnamon is the true cinnamon. The Indonesian and the Saigon are both cassias. And the cassias, where the, where the Ceylon cinnamon is, is soft and floral and, and woody, uh, the, uh, the cassias are, are really, really muscular. Uh, they're, they're very sweet, intense, powerful flavors. The uh, the Saigon cinnamon actually, uh, you know, tastes almost to the point of a red hot in terms of intensity of flavor, and in terms of in, in, you know, intensity of sweetness on the Saigon cinnamon, I've had people uh, in come come into uh, into our store trying to return product they purchased because they think it has sugar in it. It is so sweet. It, it literally, it, it's so sweet, and it's you know, it's not sugar. It's 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 just the, the aromatic sweetness of the uh, of the cinnamon. So those yeah, are you know that's that one is my favorite. Can can we talk about the the controversy? Because I did get I did get a couple emails from people who said, oh, you shouldn't be using the the Saigon cassia because it can do um, health damage. Yeah. So, and you know, we, everybody's got to do what, uh, you know, what they believe in, you know, what they think is right. And, uh, and there are certainly people that have different opinions. Um, you know, one thing that's not an opinion is, you know, in the laboratory, uh, uh, Coumarin uh, does cause liver damage. And in the lamp, in the laboratory, Coumarin is carcinogen. Uh, usually, in the literature that I've read, it's referred to in large quantities. And, yeah. and you know, the question is, well, what's, what's a large quantity and at what point does it, uh, uh, does it become dangerous? Um, so just with that little piece of information, I would say, you know, cinnamon is not something to open a jar and chug. And you know, we've out for a while, it was popular on TikTok and other social media for kids to do what they call the cinnamon challenge. To, try to, to eat an entire tablespoon of cinnamon at once. It's not a, not a good thing to do. Um, the, uh, you know, the first thing that I would say is from my research, I haven't been able to find you know, any significant clinical data to show that you know, there are people that are getting sick from ingesting cinnamon. Uh, I, I have found one case and it was a, an individual who was taking very, very high quantities of cinnamon uh, for medicinal purposes and uh, not under the direction of a, uh, of a doctor. Uh, from, what, from my research, you know, by far the best information out there comes from the European Union. And I think that it was really the European Union that ignited the controversy uh, because uh, uh, you know, when they first formed this new organization of the European Union, 
uh, you know, one of the things they wanted to do was have some of the strongest food safety laws in the world, and, and they accomplished that. Uh, one of the things, you know, with the data that we know about uh, about coumarin and, and, and that it can be a carcinogen, uh, they developed uh, human health uh, levels that they thought were uh, were you know were safe. And uh, uh, when they compared it to some of the traditional foods of uh, countries coming into the European Union, specifically the Scandinavian countries, who make very intensely flavored uh, cinnamon baked goods, um, uh, those baked goods were you know, kind of verging on the, the, the quantities that might be considered unsafe. Um, in, uh, in the European Union's uh, 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 rules, uh, they have, you know, one number that, of how much you can have and, and have it be safe for, you know, for every day all year round. Uh, but if you say that it's a uh, culturally significant product or that it's a uh, uh, it's related to a specific holiday, they'll accept three times that number. <clears throat> and the controversy really started because uh, Sweden said, oh, well, you know, our cinnamon rolls are primarily uh, around the holidays. And so it's a it's a uh, it's a seasonal thing. And Denmark, uh, where they make a very, very similar, although they'll, they'll swear it's very different, but in, ter in terms of quantities of cinnamon, uh, they said, oh no, we eat ours year round and we're not gonna say that it's seasonal. And it, it kind of became a back and forth between Denmark and the European Union to see which would bend. Um, but in the end, the European Union did accept the three times number. Uh, and and this, you know, we talk about what that number is, you know, it's a, it's based on body weight, and it's uh, it's based on the percentage of coumarin found in the cinnamon. And so, when I took uh, the Saigon cinnamon, which has the highest quantity of, of coumarin, and I took my body weight, and you know, I'm I'm not a skinny guy. I'm you know 200 pounds, 200 plus. Uh, it said that uh, you know I could consume a tablespoon of cinnamon a day and still be in the uh, in the safe range. Uh, now. A tablespoon of cinnamon a day to me is a ridiculous amount of cinnamon. You know, it's uh, it's kind of the quantity that you would put in an entire apple pie. Uh, you know, so so you know, my my response would be, we've been uh, we've been eating cinnamon uh, uh, in this in this world for at least three thousand years. Some say, say up to seven thousand years. Uh, there's not real strong clinical data to show that we know lots of people that are getting sick. Uh, you know, we don't have uh, occupational data. People that work with cinnamon aren't, aren't getting, you know, cancer or liver disease in higher percentages than other people. Um, so I would say be careful, you know, realize that you don't want to eat lots and lots of it. But the way that most people eat cinnamon, I, I don't feel that it's a problem. But I'm not going to get between you and your rabbi. So if you, if there's someone who, who you uh, trust uh, is telling you otherwise, you know, make make your own decisions. You know, I've I've talked to uh, the doctors about it, and I feel pretty comfortable about it. Now, thank you so much for all of that. That was really great, and I did my own research as well. You know, when um, people sent me the emails, and I came up with the same thing that you did, that there was the a one case of a lady in her 70s who was taking large doses, and um, and she did end up with uh, medical issues. But um, so I think, you know, it's all about dosage. And like you said, we're not eating vast quantities of cinnamon on a daily basis. So I feel I feel very comfortable using it as well. I have a funny story about that. When I back in the days when we made our entire living off farmers market, I had a, a guy who was a regular customer, bought lots of spices from us, came and said he wanted to purchase much larger quantities of our turmeric. And so I, well, I can get you, I can quote you a price. And I said, what are you doing with it? He says, Oh, well, I'm, I'm taking it for my health. And I want to, you know, I'll take a lot. And I said, Well, how much of it are you eating? And he said, About a cup a day. <laughs> and my eyes got really big and wide. And I said, I'm not going to sell it to you. <laughs> if, you're, if you're eating it in those levels and you don't have a doctor that's talking to you about it, you know, all spices are, are, you know, they're food, yeah, but they're also all medicine to some extent. And they all have, uh, they all have health benefits. They all have uh, biochemicals. You should be talking to a doctor. <laughs> you're going to be eating those kinds of quantities. That is crazy. That is just crazy. He, yeah, he needed to educate himself a little bit 
more on that. Oh, wow. More is not always better, but there are health benefits to cinnamon as well for uh, blood glucose and cholesterol and all kinds of things. It, it has some antioxidant properties as well. Yeah. From, from my reading, you know, the, the most, the most, most of the research right now is focused on the, uh, on the uh, blood sugar leveling, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, it's, it, it's very real. And a lot of people have, uh, have been able to uh, to regulate their blood sugar by using cinnamon. Um, uh, it, as you said, it has uh, has antioxidant. It's also uh, uh, antibacterial. Um, and uh, and one thing a lot of people don't realize the uh, you know, <clears throat> all of our cinnamons uh, were grown certified organic, but you would never use uh, pesticides in growing cinnamon because uh, 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 it's a natural pesticide. In fact. We grind, uh, we grind, take cinnamon from, uh, from our mill that uh, would be waste otherwise, and we use it in our garden to, uh, to keep pests away from our plants. So. Huh. I didn't know that. That is so interesting. Yeah, we, we actually happen to have, we have a, a large quantity of Saigon cinnamon that we won't be selling uh, as consumable, and we're going to be releasing it this spring as a pesticide, and that'll be kind of fun. Wow, that is very cool. It's also anti-inflammatory, I read as well. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's it's you know, it is it is great stuff. Um, but uh uh you know, again, if you're using it for medicinal purposes, it's it's easy to want to to consume more to get a, a stronger benefit, but be careful how much you take them. Now, one thing that you can do is you can also regulate between the sediments and how much how much cumin they, they consume. The, the, the number one question that I'm asked from people is which one is the is the uh, is the healthy one, and it, it's a bit of a misnomer because the uh, the health quantity the health qualities follow the coumarin and the quantities of coumarin in the cinnamon. So you know the salon cinnamon, which is the one that a lot of people will tell you, well that's the one that you should take. Uh, it's because it has less of the good stuff as well as less of the bad stuff. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, if you're trying to remember which is the one that, uh, that people tell you is the safer one, it's definitely the salon. Uh, salon has a wonderful flavor to it, and it's a, it's a unique and extraordinary flavor. I use it frequently in, uh, uh, in savory dishes. Uh, it is absolutely correct for, uh, for you know, Indian curries. Um, uh, Mexican food, any Central American food. Uh, if you're if you're looking at you know other than India Asian curries, you might go sweeter. So you know the uh, the Thai curries and the the Chinese curries are more likely to use a, a cassia. But Indian curries is absolutely correct to use the, the salon cinnamon. Okay, that's great. That's good to know. And you, and you do have it in a lot of different um, blends. As I was looking through my, my spices um, today, of, of course, it's in the gingerbread, mm -hmm. which is lovely. I like that because you've already figured that out for me. And the pumpkin spice, which mm -hmm. a lot of people will be using pretty soon. And then um, I think it was Jesse, our moderator, that told me about dark yeah. Uh huh. This is pretty amazing. <laughs> and this has, pleasure. yeah. So, how did you come up with this? So, actually, dark was began as something to uh, to blend in to blend with chocolate. Uh, I was, you know, working on a chocolate mousse and uh, you know trying to come up with a blend of spices that would be, you know, really overwhelmingly spicy, kind of like like you know. Our previous conversation about a curry where the spice becomes an integral component of the flavor. Uh, but I wanted it to go to, to play well with chocolate. So I, I drew from primarily Central American flavors, although in, in you know when you taste it, it's it, Central American is not the first thing you 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 uh, have in your mind, but it yeah it does have does have quite a bit of cinnamon, has quite a bit of black pepper in it, has uh 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 we we put some uh, some very sweet not hot chilies in for some for some richness and some sweetness complexity. Uh, it's a uh, to me that the the dark is the ultimate dessert blend, and it's it's fun to serve people because it's a flavor no one's had before. 
Yeah. So I'm going to make, I make this chocolate chia pudding. And so I'm going to make some of it today and I'm going to, I'm going to use this in it and um, see, I think it's going to be fantastic. Perfect. So yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm real excited about that. And then in your Chinese five spice is cinnamon. Right, go, going back to the dark, try sprinkling the dark on top of a, uh, a vanilla ice cream. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that would be delicious. It would be delicious. I, I, you know what? I can eat it right from the jar. I'm terrible, but it's really, it's really that good. It's re like just a little bit. Mm, it's so good. So good. So that's fun. Well, um, let's see, what are you going to make for us today? Uh, so I wanted to, I wanted to, uh, to make something where, where the type of cinnamon you use really makes a difference. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm not myself much of a baker. I think I, I'll, I'll bake about six items in a year and most of them uh, in, in, in November and December. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just a, a, a quick horchata. It's, uh, it is uh, sweetened with, uh, with dates and is, uh, is entirely plant-based. Um, one thing I want before we jump over there, uh, sure. uh, blending of uh, cinnamon flavors is also totally acceptable. In fact, in some of our blends, you'll find that we use two or three different kinds of cinnamon to get just the right profile. Uh, in fact, we have two different blends that we have for, that we offer. One we call Baker cinnamon, and the Baker cinnamon is a blend of the Indonesian and the Saigon. And we got the 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 Baker cinnamon was actually. I created specific to go well with uh, with apples, but any time that you want your cinnamon to play well with fruit, you know you'll find that the Saigon, you know, it's this intensely sweet and powerful cinnamon, and you want to use it for everything, but it really will overpower uh, uh, fruits and and you know to back it off, but still have something that just is going to taste much you know stronger and different and better than the typical Indonesian. I blended the two. So that's the bakers. So when you want it to play well with other flavors, it's kind of a nice one to consider. The other one that's also, you know, fun and you can use as a dessert spice on its own. On its own, you can use it just to replace uh, 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 cinnamon in any dish. We call it Ann Davis, and Ann Davis is uh, oh. it's uh, it's Indonesian cinnamon and uh, and rose and. Equal quantities uh, by weight, but as you can imagine, in terms of volume, it's a huge amount of, of, uh, of dried organic roses and a very small quantity of cinnamon, which we put in the mill together, they get blended in the mill. And it has, you know, sort of a, uh, uh, you know, a, per a Persian sort of a flavor. Sometimes I'll use the, uh, the cinnamon rose in some of the lighter uh, uh, curries just to, just to infuse that rose flavor. But, you know, anything you're doing like snickerdoodles or, you know, where the, the cinnamon flavor is key, it brings in that floral sweetness. It's just lovely. So with that. That's I'm good to know. My, my grandkids love snicker, vegan. We make them vegan, vegan yeah. snickerdoodles. So, okay, that's good to know. So see, every time I talk to you, my list grows of things, <laughs> things I want try, to draw. Try the dark on snickerdoodles. Okay. <laughs> Oh, what that would be really, oh, wouldn't that be interesting? <gasps> yeah. Okay. I'm making my notes. All right. So horchata, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's a rice milk. Um, usually if you, you know, you get it at a, uh, at a Mexican restaurant, they, they make it quite sweet. I like it a little bit less sweet. Uh, in fact, I find that the, uh, the vegan, uh, the vegan form sweetened with dates is actually much, much tastier than this stuff with sugar. Um, it's really fast to put together initially, and then what takes the most amount of time is straining it out. So it's, we can do this. Uh, the one thing I have prepared in advance is uh, uh, I've got my rice soaking. Um, the rice should soak for at least two hours up to overnight. And the reason for that is I'm going to dump all the water that it's soaking in. Uh, so that's not the horchata, but it's it's kind of to soften the rice up so that you don't get quite so much of the, of the flour and it infuses better in the water. So this is, uh, in this pot, I took uh, three quarters of a cup of, uh, of long grain white rice, uh, two cups of, of, of hot, you know, not boiling. I, I took it out of, the, uh, out of the faucet here, but you know, our 
because we're a food processor, our faucet is 150 degrees. It's pretty hot. You could, you know, you could heat it up on the stove if you wanted to, but you know, just hot water out of the sink is probably good enough. And it's been soaking for two hours. So I am I'm just going to drain it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that goes in the blender. And I'm going to use put in some dates. So for the dates, I use the Mejdul. These are it's just a Costco product, very easy to get. Uh, I'll usually use, you know, five to seven. Seven makes it pretty sweet. I'm going to go with five. So that's five dates. And, and, and we just, better get five pits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pull the pits out and throw these right in. Um, you know, since we're going to strain it, you don't really have to worry about the, uh, the skin on the date. It's, it's all going to come out. So Adele would like to know which cinnamon would you use to sprinkle over hot oatmeal? Hot oatmeal. So, well, Evelyn's not here to defend herself because uh, we're, a, we're a two cinnamon family. <laughs> Evelyn, <laughs> Evelyn absolutely puts nothing but salon on her oatmeal. Uh, and I'm a Saigon guy. So we're at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Somehow we make it work. Okay. <laughs> All right, so four, I'm going to put four cups of water in, and this time I'm going to do cold. It doesn't, you know, you can use hot, whatever you've got. And you don't have to, as you can tell, don't have to be real precise on this. Really, all we're trying to do is, is, uh, is uh, blend up the uh, the rice and infuse it with some uh, some spices. And that's okay. It. The quantities of uh, of seasoning. I'm going to do a uh, a teaspoon of the salon cinnamon, and then just to add a little extra flavor, uh, I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of uh, vanilla, and this is just just organic milled vanilla bean, which is totally appropriate for a, uh, for a Mexican dish. Um, all right, that's it. Uh, you don't have to have a high power blender to make this. Um, with, uh, with the Vitamix, it really just takes a few seconds. I've got it run, uh, set on eight, and so cover your ears while we uh, give me 30 seconds. Okay. Well, that's going, Tom, I'm going to let people know it was three fourths of a cup of long grain white rice, two cups of hot water, let it soak for at least two hours, and then you drain it, put it in the blender with five to seven dates, four cups of water, a teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon, and half a teaspoon of the ground vanilla bean. Uh huh. So, and, and when we I, get done, we can we can put it in the show notes for you guys yeah. as well. Um, uh, okay. So, in terms of how long I blend it for, you'll see if you. I don't think you'll be able to see this, but it's not. You know, it, it it's there are no chunks left, but you can definitely see little particles of the date still in there. That's fine because what happened is we've released most of the sugars uh, into the liquid. And we are going to be uh, 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 straining it out now. Talk a little bit about straining because this is really the whole process to making the horchata. I happen to have a very, very fine sieve, which, uh, which I like to use. I think it's a little bit faster. I think most people, and before I, I discovered that this sieve works very well for this, uh, uh, some of the best things that I found is to use um, uh, cloth, like a t-shirt cloth, or, uh, or if you have, uh, 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 you know, some clean pantyhose, actually, just absolutely perfect. Um, I've, you know, a lot of recipes will say you can use cheesecloth, but I don't find that the cheesecloth really is fine enough, and you end up with 
a lot of gritty stuff still in it. Um, I am gonna just rinse this a bit, make sure. I think what I'm seeing, yeah, it's on the bottom. Okay. Because I am gonna drink this. Uh, probably, I'm not gonna take the time to do this whole thing in front of you, but just to show you a little bit and how it ends up. Um, I bet this is delicious. I cannot wait to try this. It, it, you know, and so, oh, and you know what? It's really good. It makes a great popsicle. Oh, oh, that is awesome. Hey, I wonder if we could freeze it and do it in the Ninja Creamy. I'll bet you could. I'll, I, oh. we, we don't have one yet. And so, you know, if Evelyn's uh, thinking Christmas and she's listening in. But, uh, yes. Oh, I think it would be wonderful in that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, so it makes quite a bit. So I would have enough to drink and do a pint of um, ice cream in the Ninja Creamy. Yeah, and you can always make more too. So at this point, it's, you know, pretty much choking up my screen. So I'm just going to move it aside and we'll have a nice, oh, I have one last step that I haven't told you about. Okay. So if you want to go, you know, if you want to really have the lowest amount of fat possible, this is drinkable and, and it, it tastes like horchata. It's a little bit thin. Um, I like to add, I like to add just like a cup of nut milk to it. Uh, and it, it gives it more of a creamy texture. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, Oh, I do have a one cup measure. Here we go. So, Nick, somebody is asking is that three quarter cup of long grain white rice, is that raw or cooked? That's raw. Okay, raw rice, you guys. Yeah, now if you, if you do this, you know, if you're going to use, uh, you know, the canned coconut milk, I would use a half a can because that stuff is really rich. The stuff is uh, a lot lower in fat. Um, but I just put a cup in with that. And again, uh, and many of you probably would be very, very happy uh, just drinking it without that. So let's call this an option. But I think if you're going to be making the uh, the uh, the nice nice cream or uh, popsicles, you probably need the extra, a little bit of extra fat. Yeah, I think so. I think it would be great. Adele says we could call it rice cream. There you go. I, when, I, uh, when, I when I lived in uh, Yucatan, uh, the people that uh, made all of our food for us, that prepared it for us, also made horchata. They told us that they made it... Uh, when their children were uh, were babies, and and they, you know, they, I was in the middle of nowhere in a in a little Mayan village, uh, and this is what they made for uh, for infants instead of formula. They use you know the the rice uh, uh, to to fortify the, uh, the the water and make it like this. So there's your uh, there's your horchata, and it's just absolutely perfect for me. That you'll see the. The, the sweetness of the uh, of the uh, salon cinnamon, it, the sweetness comes on more towards the, the back of the mouth. It's not an immediate jump on you uh, cinnamon kind of a thing. It's it 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 allows the other flavors to come forward more. <laughs> to me, it's the only way to make a marchata. Okay, and is it always served cold? Only way I've ever had it is cold. Um, okay. People that drink coffee, it's not a bad thing to put in your coffee. Oh, 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 that would be delicious. Use as a creamer. Okay. And Tom wants to know, do people sprinkle a little bit of sure. cinnamon over the top of it when sure. they serve yeah. it? Or yeah. yeah. So another, another idea that I was going to mention, so this we use uh, cinnamon, but you can use any dessert spice uh, instead of cinnamon if you want to go out of there. I came into this this morning thinking dark would be really good in this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Moroc our uh, Moroccan breakfast blend would be very good in this. Um, 
Uh, I love that. I've got that out. The Oh, I love that Moroccan black breakfast blend. So good. And you that's another sprinkle one that, that on your oatmeal. Yeah. And that's another one that features the salon cinnamon. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Well, and you know, a little bit of nutmeg's not bad either. Uh, Over the top. Every, just a little. Every, everybody needs more nutmeg in their life. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, that's wonderful, Nick. I can't wait to make that. I think this would be a really fun um, holiday drink to have too. I think it would be a really fun thing to make. That's what I was thinking when I suggested. I thought it'd be a good thing moving into the holidays. And it, yeah, you know, it does. It does have some sugar, but it it, it is generally a pretty healthy beverage. Yeah. Well, you know, we use dates in our whole food plant based cooking because, again, it's you know, you, you're getting the whole fruit, you're getting, you know, a lot of nutrients and antioxidants from it as well. And so it's just wonderful, natural sweetness. Hey, you know, one question that I get when I'm showing, um, local spicery, um, spices is people are always asking me, are they organic? So can you talk about that? Yes. The answer is mostly, so, you know, our, our commitment, you know, we're, we're all about the flavor. And uh, uh, there are certain things that we have not been able to, uh, to procure organic. In some cases, it's, you know, we can get it, but the cost is just ridiculous. And in some cases, we just can't find it. Uh, so, you know, and they, they tend to be flavors that we still want to have uh, you know, in, our, in our blends and in our life. Uh, you know, we, well over 90% of the base spices that we use were grown certified organic. And we're very, very transparent, as transparent as US FDA will allow us to be. If you look at the, uh, the list of ingredients on the, uh, on the jar and also on the website, if there's an asterisk that says that that was, uh, was grown certified organic. Um, unfortunately, the biggest hole we have is uh, we're not able to find uh, organic uh, uh, chilies that have not been, um, uh, so we, you know, I, I have found a place that has organic chilies, but they add anti-caking agents to it, which, uh, you know, we, we just don't like anything that's not really food. So we, that's not something we do. But we used to be able to get, uh, uh, you know, our jalapeno and our, uh, our uh, chipotle organic, but right now they're not available on the market. So. That's probably the biggest hole for us, but it, it's a very small list of ingredients that's not organic. But, uh, you know, we love organic too, and we're trying as hard as we can to be as organic as possible. And then do you also check into, like if, if you're um, dealing with a supplier and the item isn't organic, um, if they have good growing practices, because I know from going to the farmers markets that, you know, not all of them can afford to get organic cer certified organic, but right. if you talk to them and you find out, you know, they're doing everything that, you know, the guy two stands down is doing, but they can't afford to, to get certified. Right. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, we, we don't pay the extra money to get organic saf saffron as, as an example. Um, you know, it's about a 30% upcharge, but there's absolutely no difference in, uh, in the way that the product is grown. Uh, the only difference is in the cost of the certification, as you mentioned. And also when, you know, back in the day when we were milling our own vanilla, uh, uh, we, for the most part, weren't getting organic vanilla because again, you know, we have a very close connection, you know, through La Faza with the, with the actual growers and, there's no difference in, in, uh, in the methods of growing, whether it's certified or not. The only difference is in the certification. And trust me, if I could get the certified, you know, it's much, much better. One of the things that I like about certified is that annually they have to do a, a, a mass spectrometer, you know, full scan of, for all chemicals uh, in the product and in the soil. And it's a, it's a good thing to have when you're, when you're buying product from around the world. But uh, yeah, we do. We do try to get the, you know, we we uh, you know we do, you know, talk and understand about the growing practices as much as possible. You know, an another thing is a number of our of our products uh, can't be certified organic because they're uh, they're wild harvested. Kombu kelp, for example, it's 
you know, there, there is no you know, growing field that can be sampled on an annual basis. It's wild harvested. Uh, our, uh, our dill pollen, our fennel pollen are both wild harvested. Uh, our chinchona bark is wild harvested. And it's, you know, obviously there are no agricultural chemicals added to it, but, uh, but, but it can't be certified. Yeah, well, this is why I trust you, even if something isn't organic, because I know how conscientious you and Evelyn are, and how important it is to you what you put into your body. So, you know, I know that you're doing all the research and choosing the best product that you can find. And so thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate your, appreciate your trust. It, it means a lot to me. Yeah. And, and I do, I, you know, I, and I love all of your products. And did you show the jar of, um, of vanilla? Cause since people are starting to, um, bake, people are emailing me and tech and, um, sending me Facebook messages, asking me about this back up just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. And you guys, I have that. And it is so amazing. I'll, I'll so give I'll give LaFaza a little bit of a plug. We've known these guys since the day they started the company. They started out about the same time we did. They, uh, they were, they, uh, we met them at the Oakland Farmer's Market. Uh, it's two brothers. Um, one of them uh, was in uh, Madagascar with the, uh, with the Peace Corps, uh, fell in love with the people, fell in love with vanilla, and didn't want to come back. So the two brothers formed a company where one lives in Madagascar and works on a daily basis with the growers. The other one is here. He's in Oakland, California, and he runs the business. Uh, these guys, before they ever got a certification uh, fair trade, uh, were already, uh, you know, funneling a large percentage of their profits back into the community. They build libraries. They build schools. They're training the uh, uh, the locals in, uh, uh, you know, uh, water conservation in their in their growing. And in return, they uh, they get the the best. They, they you know. They get to pick their beans before it goes off to the co-op. So they're getting the very, very highest quality beans. And, uh, and a lot of good is being done as a result of it. Wonderful. Well, it's a great product. And we, just when you open up the jar of it, oh, my gosh, I could like smell that all day. Vanilla is one of my favorite scents. I mm -hmm. just love it. So when we're using the vanilla bean powder, if a recipe calls for a teaspoon of vanilla extract, then how much vanilla bean powder would we use? So usually it's a three to one. If, if it calls for a tablespoon, you use a teaspoon. So if it calls for a teaspoon, you'd use like a third to a half a teaspoon. Okay, good. Because uh, I've, I've wondered about that because if I use the exact amount, it's too strong. Right. You know, because the vanilla bean is so great. And it, you know, it's difficult when you read reviews of um, before you had this one, when I would read reviews online for different vanilla bean powders, you know, you couldn't be certain that it was all real vanilla bean that they were grinding up and putting in there. That, that, there's that, but there's also a lot of uh, where the vanilla is grown is really, really critical. Um, you know, 90% of the world's vanilla right now comes from Madagascar. Uh, but, you know, that if you compare Madagascan vanilla to, to Vera, you know, true Veracruz vanilla from, from Mexico, it's, a, it's an OMG moment. The, the, the Veracruz vanilla is as different as the Saigon Cassia is from the Indonesian. Intense, intense flavor differences. And then, and then there's the, uh, the Papua New Guinea or the, the Tahitian um, uh, which is much, much milder. So when you're ordering vanilla, when you're buying vanilla, if you don't know where it was grown, there's a huge variation in, in the flavor profile and the flavor intensity. Okay, good to know. And there was, you know, a few years ago, there was like a shortage or, or something on vanilla, vanilla beans because like everything vanilla was very, very expensive. And uh, are we past whatever that was? It's uh, it is coming down. Started coming down uh, uh, just this year. I mean, it's an interesting story. It was you know, one year. Uh, one year there was a tropical storm that uh, hit Madagascar and wiped out thirty percent of the of the of the harvest. Uh, so the price <clears throat> doubled. Uh, but you know, everyone felt pretty good about it because 
it doubled at the at the uh, at the farm level, and the money was really all going to the farmers who were hurting because they had lost so much product. Uh, but then two years later, uh, there was another tropical storm that wiped out about forty percent of the uh, of the harvest, and that uh, it turned out that uh, that uh, China had uh, completely cornered the market in the futures for vanilla bean, and with the reduction in the in the quantity of the market, they they ended up owning a hundred percent of the uh, of the harvest of vanilla bean, and they tripled the price. So in two years, it went up sixfold. It went from you know, it used to be 50 bucks a pound wholesale went up to 300 and, uh, and then ultimately it went up to 350. Uh, it, uh, it started coming down uh, uh, right in 2020 and then the, uh, and then the, uh, and then COVID came and, and with the, the vagaries in the, the, the supply chain, it, we didn't see the prices that we'd hoped for, but this year we are, we are seeing a good 15, 20% drop right now and hoping that it comes down more because I love vanilla and I love using vanilla and I don't like feeling guilty because it's so expensive. <laughs> right, right. So um, if people are trying to decide between vanilla bean and vanilla, doing the ground vanilla bean and vanilla extract, like somebody asked me on YouTube the other day, you know, does anybody still use vanilla extract? Is it okay? What are your thoughts? To, I think of the two as such different flavors now. You know, the vanilla extract, you really get a strong alcohol flavor. Uh, you know, it, it, to me, it's almost almost more like a beverage. And I, I just, in the last 10 years of, of owning a spice company, I only use the, the powder. It's so much richer and, uh, and, you know, and complex and sweet, and deep. Uh, these are the kinds of things that you just can't re recreate in, even in a, uh, a double strength uh, 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 tincture. So, um, you know, that, and again, that's for me personally. I, I in my life, I've made many, many, uh, you know, cakes and pies and breads using uh, using an extract. But I, I do prefer the the bean. Okay, well, and that makes sense because you're a spicerer, and so <laughs> I, I, I'm, you know, i and and I think that you, you know, you have a very keen sense of flavor and taste. I mean, that's why you're doing what you do, and so you know, you really notice all the different nuances um, when you're, when you're making something or when you're tasting something. So, I mean, since I started using it, it's, it's my go-to as well, but I know that it's not in everyone's budget, you know, yeah. probably not. And so then my advice would be to, you know, save it for the really special dishes where the vanilla is very prominent and um you know that's what you want to showcase i guess um, you know, taste them side by side i mean i without saying one is better they are very different you know that yeah. the the the, uh, the extract it's you know it, it's a it's a lighter flavor it's like i said mm -hmm. it's got the it's got the alcohol content it uh in some ways, it feels more aromatic, but the bean is just so much richer and uh, and complex. Uh, I I have some treasured uh, uh, um, extract in my uh, in my pantry that my daughter made for me, and I use it on on very special occasions and rarely because I don't know if she'll make it again for me. But oh. it's, it's, I do use it. Yeah. 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 No, I love that. And some some people are commenting in the in the comments that since they started using vanilla bean powder, they can't use extract anymore because there's such a difference in flavor. And, and I agree there is, there is, but I don't want people who can't afford it to feel bad. Um, but you guys, um, our link to local spicery, Tom posted it in the chat feed. It's, you can also find it underneath the um, show in the see more or the show description as well. And it actually takes you to my landing page on local spicery. And you can see like a whole list of the spices that 
um, I get from them that I use in my cooking. And when people, people are always asking, well, you know, which ones should I get? Well, it depends on what kind of food you make, you know? So whatever spices you routinely use in your cooking, then those are the ones I would suggest that you start with first. And then, you know, um, try a couple new things as well. But, you know, it, it depends on what kind of cuisine you um, most often make. So it's www.localspicery.com slash nutmeg notebook. And if you do go through Tammy's landing page, uh, there is a link directly to her favorite spices. And there's also a link directly to uh, uh, a landing page we put together that extracts only salt-free blends. Uh, so if you're, if you're going salt-free, that's the easiest way to make sure that you're, you're not buying uh, blends that have salt. Because we do have a few blends that have a salt content. Yeah, but there's a huge, huge list of SOS free that you can get. And um, oh, did you? I didn't get out my salt substitute. Um, do you? You probably don't have yours there either, since we were talking uh, about the cinnamon today. Do you have a jar of it? This is my kitchen, Tammy. It's always right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You guys, this is so, so good. And how did you come up with this? Oh, it's called, it's called Salacious. Um, and, you know, I've had a number of people over the years ask me to make a salt substitute. And it's been something I've always resisted because, you know, salt is such an extraordinary, it's, you know, it's not just a flavor. The way that it interacts with us is so complex. And I thought, you know, how can anything be salt? Uh, and it wasn't we, until Evelyn and I were, were working with uh, uh, some Middle Eastern flavors. Uh, we were actually creating, a, we did another blend that we call Seatopia, which is a, a nutless dukkha. It's a dukkha that's made with seeds instead of nuts. And when we, uh, when we put some, uh, uh, we put some sumac berry in it uh, and tasted it, it tasted like salt and it was just like oh my god <laughs> yeah. and so that that was that was the point where we realized you know what we can do this um salacious it's not ever going to be salty like the salt on a pretzel but when you put it in a dish it tastes like the dish has been salted it really does yeah it does i love it so it's it's just it i there's a lot of different salt substitutes that i like that i've tried but this one has the most salt like flavor of and any I'll, of them i'll bet this is the only one where you can say everything in this jar was grown in the ground there's yeah. no no chemicals nothing not, nothing manufactured these are all agricultural products just flavorings just spices. Yeah. so delicious so okay that's great well i know that um you are you've got a very busy day ahead of you so i want to thank you for coming on and teaching us all about um, cinnamon. And um, I'm going to be making that um, beverage later today. So um, I'm excited about that. And I'm going to freeze some of it and try it in my creamy. I'll let you know how that goes. And, I'm looking forward to um, that. Tell Evelyn, thank you so much for helping you today to get this on. It's so exciting. And we'll, we'll be talking to you again soon, I'm sure. I hope so. It's always good to see you, Tammy and Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi. Yeah, he's hiding over here. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Nick. You too. Thanks, Tammy. I appreciate this. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. All right, you guys, that was so much fun. It was so great. I just, uh, we have a few minutes left and I want to tell you what we have coming up. So this is a double um, show week for us. We will be back on tomorrow and tomorrow we have um, Faith. Ralphs from Faithful Plateful, and she will be here doing a cooking demo. Also, she's going to be making a delicious whole food plant-based stir fry for us with a crispy tofu. And she wrote this book. And I have to tell you, um, last week when the grandkids came over um, for the day, I showed them this book and they said, what? It's a vegan cookbook? is it for kids? And I said, it is. And they said, do we get to cook the recipes? I said, you do. And so they picked out two recipes that we made and they were absolutely delicious. We made 
um, a, a fruit cobbler, and that was really fun. And we also made a nice cream. And so it is geared for kids. So if you have, if you cook for children, if you have children, you have grandchildren, this cookbook is for you. It is amazing. And she tells you which recipes are for what age group skill wise, um, but pretty much, you know, they can help and do so many things. And so it is the first cookbook that I've seen that is geared towards children um, for them to be able to cook out of and lots of hints and tips on feeding kids in here. And I'm super excited to have Faith on tomorrow. And I might tell you that um, uh, I wrote um, I got to see the manuscript before she had it published, and I got to write um, a little review about it, which is on the back of the book. So super excited to have Faith on tomorrow, and it will be at nine o'clock. And then um, next week we, on the um, the 10th, which will be our normal Thursday, we'll have Wanda and Lisa from the National Health Association, and they will be here talking about upcoming trips, plant-based trips um, with the National Health Association, where all the food on the um, the the trip will all be whole food plant based and SOS free and um, don't forget to get your health science magazine it's thirty five dollars for a yearly subscription you go to healthscience.org to sign up and you get this magazine quarterly it's a whole food plant based SOS free magazine and um, it has recipes and interviews with doctors and Everything in it is science-based and it's wonderful. And then also you can go ahead and, and get your tickets now for the conference for the National Health Association, which will be June 23rd through June 25th. It's over a weekend. Um, Tom and I will be there and um, we actually are going to be doing a cooking demo together. So that should be really fun and lots of great doctors Go to um, healthscience.org. Yes, if you put Nutmeg Notebook in the comments at checkout, you will get the fall issue, even though this has already been mailed. If you put Nutmeg Notebook in the comment section when you check out, um, they will go ahead and send you an, uh, the fall issue, which you'll want because there's a beautiful recipe spread in here and um, really fun. And it also gives you access to uh, all of the past issues online as well. So if you missed when Tiffany, one of our moderators, when she had her recipes in there or my recipes or Chef AJ's or our friend Shada's, lots of people that we know have had their recipes profiled in there. So that is exciting. And let's see. Oh, and then what else do we have? Oh, on um, November 22nd, um, we will be having Super Cubes, Michelle from Super Cubes. Remember, they were on Shark Tank and um, they're doing great. And she's going to be joining us and we're going to have a special announcement that day about Super Cubes. And then um, also on Tuesday, November 22nd, Super Cubes will be at 10. And then at noon, we will um, have Corey from Holland Bull Mill here. He will actually be at the factory and um, we'll have some exciting things to talk to him about. And um, we're super excited about that. So lots of fun stuff coming up later this month. And we hope that you'll come back tomorrow and join us at 9 a.m. Pacific, which will be 11 Central and noon Eastern. Okay, did I get everything in that I was supposed to talk about, Tom? Yeah, and we're out of time. And Tom says, and we're out of time. All right. Thank you, Jesse and Tiffany, for um, being here with us and moderating an extra day. We really appreciate that. And um, thank you, everyone, for coming. And I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. <laughs> and we help you. There's a, there's a reason I've been hiding. It's these. He's still. These post-surgery surgery things. Yeah. Another week and I'll be done with this. So. We hope so. You know. He's having another procedure done on Friday. 
and um, we're hoping that it's the last one. So, so anywhere he's wearing funky glasses and, and sometimes I look at him and I just start laughing because he, he's like, why are you laughing? I'm like, you're so, it looks so fun. Okay. Anyway, we help you get healthy and, and stay, stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at a time. time. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day. Bye.